Neutrophils are one of the most important white blood cells in your innate immune system. They provide general defense against pathogens, especially during infection. There's just too much information about neutrophils to slam it all into one video. So we've broken everything you need to know about neutrophils into three short videos. In this video, I'm just going to give you a big picture idea about what neutrophils are and what they do. Aliens have crashed on planet Earth, and the army has been called in to capture them. Take a look at the net holding the aliens. By the way, this net is our anchoring symbol for neutrophils. Get it? It's a net for neutrophil, or netrophil. Neutrophils are one of the major type of white blood cells in our innate immune system. In fact, they are the most abundant type of leukocyte in the blood, making them pretty high yield for test day. Let's dive in to learn all about neutrophils. First, let's take a look at what neutrophils look like. See how we have caught three aliens in this net? Of course the aliens didn't come to Earth alone. Weirdly, the multiple aliens in this net kind of remind me of the multi-lobed nuclei of neutrophils. You know, since these aliens are dark, blue-purple, and blob-shaped, and they are even holding hands, which kind of looks like the connected lobes of the neutrophil nucleus. You really need to remember what a normal neutrophil nucleus looks like, since abnormalities in these nuclei can be a sign of certain pathologies. For example, a hypersegmented nuclei, or a neutrophil nuclei with more than six lobes, is a sign of megaloblastic anemia. So just remember the multiple aliens in this net to remember that neutrophils contain nuclei with three to five lobes. As a side note, I want to mention that you may hear neutrophils described as polymorphonuclear cells, or PMNs. This just refers to their multi-lobed nuclei, since poly means many, morpho means shape, and nuclear means nuclei. PMN therefore refers to any cell with multiple nuclear lobes, including neutrophils, but also cells like eosinophils and basophils. However, neutrophils are the most abundant. I mean, neutrophil levels are way higher than that of eosinophils and basophils at baseline. Therefore, people often used increased PMNs as a synonym for increased neutrophils. You will see this on the wards and the boards, so I just wanted to clarify the terminology so you don't get confused. Alright, now check out this fire caused by the asteroid hitting the Earth. Because asteroids are always on fire, right? By the way, these flames coincidentally help me remember acute inflammation. Get it? Flames for inflammation? Furthermore, acute inflammation is almost like a fire in your body. It involves heat, redness, and pain. Neutrophils are a key player and usually the first immune cell to respond to acute inflammation. You see, inflammation is a type of innate immune defense against infection, and it works not only by making the local environment more hostile to pathogens, but also by attracting immune cells to the site. The first cells to be recruited are usually neutrophils, so whenever we have a tissue injury or infection, one of the first things you'll notice is an increase in neutrophil count. You will definitely notice this in the hospital, since one of the first signs of infection is an elevated neutrophil count. You will also find high neutrophil counts during autoimmune reactions, since autoimmune attack also results in inflammation. It's a good idea to just associate neutrophil infiltration with inflammation. Just picture these flames to remember that neutrophils are typically seen in inflammation. Okay, so we know that neutrophils respond quickly to inflammation, but what attracts them to these sites? Take a look at that five-star general rushing into the scene. You bet the government rallied the military to deal with this alien threat. By the way, the five stars on this general is our recurring symbol for C5A, a protein released during complement activation. Get it? Since the five stars represent the five and C5? Specifically, C5A is created by the cleavage of C5 during complement activation, and C5A acts as a potent chemotaxis agent. In other words, it's very good at attracting neutrophils to the site. Since complement tends to be activated on foreign pathogen surfaces, it makes sense why complement activation would recruit neutrophils to the site. Neutrophils help fight infections using ways we'll talk about later. 
Just remember the five stars on the general to remember C5A attracts neutrophils. Now, turn to the lieutenant boy who is opening that gate for the general to pass through. By the way, this lieutenant boy makes me think of leukotriene B4, an inflammatory cytokine that attracts neutrophils. Lieutenant for leukotriene and boy for B4, right? As you can imagine, leukotriene B4 is another molecule that can attract neutrophils to sites of inflammation. Oh yeah, we should talk about that gate. Of course, we want to have a locked gate here, since this is a military site that only authorized people should be able to access. Well, notice specifically how these gates were interlocking. Yeah, you get me. Interlocking objects are our recurring symbol for the interleukins. So this interlocking gate is our symbol for interleukin 8. Since gate rhymes with 8, right? And you bet that interleukin 8, or IL-8, is another cytokine that attracts neutrophils to the site of infection. We have a dedicated scene on IL-8, but really the only fact you need to know is that it attracts neutrophils. So we've covered C5A, leukotriene V4, and IL-8 as chemoattractant molecules that recruit neutrophils. These are the most high yield to remember for test day, but are by no means exhaustive for the chemoattractants. In fact, other things like platelet activating factor and colicrian are also able to recruit neutrophils. I wouldn't focus as much on those since they are kind of low yield for test day. Okay, so once we get neutrophils to the infection site, what do neutrophils actually do? Let's find out. Next, do you see the alien biting that net in an attempt to escape? That's a nasty set of teeth on that alien. The biting is actually our symbol for phagocytosis since phagocytosis just refers to ingesting or eating foreign material. And we're talking about phagocytosis here since neutrophils are the main phagocytic killers of the innate immune system. Basically, neutrophils arrive on sites of inflammation and infection and run around eating up the invading microbes. The ingested microbes are eventually killed by lytic enzymes as well as reactive oxygen species in the phagosomes of neutrophils. We cover how neutrophils make reactive oxygen species in a dedicated video for the oxidative burst. You should check it out sometime. But for now, you should know that neutrophils run around eating things, and once eaten, neutrophils kill the ingested microbes by exposing them to toxic compounds. Besides phagocytosis, neutrophils also trap pathogens. Just take a look at the net to remember neutrophil extracellular traps which are also just called NETs, or NETs. How perfect. It's a net for NETs. The neutrophil extracellular trap is exactly what it sounds like. They are extracellular traps for pathogens. Basically, when a neutrophil is overwhelmed by an infection, it can fling out its DNA and proteins to make fibers, which in turn work to trap pathogens. Kind of like throwing a net to capture something. This is pretty straightforward, so let's just keep going. Lastly, turn to the plane in the background spraying fuel out of its tail. To contain the alien threat, this plane is also spraying out some toxic stuff. By the way, this plane releasing or spraying stuff is our symbol for degranulation. Neutrophils can degranulate, which simply means releasing all the stuff from inside a neutrophil's granules to the outside. The granules inside a neutrophil contain many compounds with active antimicrobial properties, which we cover in a dedicated scene on neutrophil granules. In brief, the compounds released by neutrophils during degranulation can directly kill the infecting pathogens, recruit other immune cells, or participate in tissue healing. Finally, before we close, let's get back to where the alien even came from, this asteroid here. Coincidentally, this asteroid is our recurring symbol for steroids. Get it? An asteroid for steroids. And the aliens being released by the asteroid helps me remember that corticosteroids cause demargination of neutrophils. Demargination is just a fancy term for an increase in circulating neutrophils following steroid use. Basically, the majority of your resting neutrophils are not circulating but rather hidden away in marginalized pools. These pools are basically neutrophils attached to the walls of blood vessels in your liver, spleen, and lungs. 
When people take steroids, these neutrophils come off the walls and re-enter the bloodstream, a process called demargination. Although this increases the neutrophil count in the blood, this does not correspond to an inflammatory process or infection. Rather, the neutrophil activity is actually suppressed. Since steroids are commonly given in the hospital, you'll see this all the time and have to understand that no, the patient does not have an infection. Rather, it's just these asteroids, I mean, steroids, that cause the neutrophils to come out into the open. All right, that's it for this overview video on neutrophils. Let's recap quickly so you can check out the other parts of this series. Neutrophils are the most abundant leukocyte in our bodies. Due to their multi-lobed nuclei, they are also called polymorphonuclear cells. Neutrophils are seen in acute inflammation, and they are attracted to these inflammation sites by C5A, IL-8, and leukotriene B4. After they arrive, neutrophils fight infections through phagocytosis, releasing antimicrobial molecules through degranulation, and forming neutrophil extracellular traps. An elevated neutrophil count does not always point to infection or inflammation since corticosteroid use can cause demargination of resting pools of neutrophils. And we're done with this overview on neutrophils. Short and sweet, right? I'll see you in the next ones. Thanks for watching. For more videos like this one, click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also support our team by visiting pixarize.com, where you'll find exclusive videos and interactive review images. If you like what we're doing, share with your friends on social media, and we'll keep making great content like this. We'll see you next time.